Samsung credits overwhelming demand to shipping delays on its new Galaxy S4. But that didn't stop us from getting our hands on one, and as you might expect, we didn't waste any time getting that highly anticipated Android device onto our teardown table. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and today we're going to take a look at Samsung's latest addition to its Galaxy line, the Galaxy S4. On the surface, not a whole lot has changed in this new iteration. The dimensions of the S3 and S4 are nearly identical. The most noticeable change is the slight increase in screen size from 4.8 inches on the S3 to a nice round 5 inches on the S4. With the new screen size, the Galaxy S4 has a 1920 by 1080 resolution and a whopping 441 pixels per inch, even more than the iPhone 5. Other than that, the phone is slightly, and I mean basically imperceptibly thinner and lighter, but the upgrades on the inside are a little more noticeable. The processor was upgraded to either the quad-core 1.9 GHz Snapdragon 600 processor or the Exynos 5 Octa 8-core chip, depending on where you're ordering from, both of which have a nice 2 GB of RAM. As you might expect with those updated processors, the S4 has been outperforming even the previous title holder, the HTC One, on Geekbench scoring and is by all accounts a snappy and responsive device. The S4 also has added LTE support for those of you who are lucky enough to have it in your area. But these are the facts and figures that anyone can tell you about. What we're interested in here at iFixit is what's inside of this device and how easy it's going to be to take it apart. We were delighted when we discovered that absolutely zero tools are required to remove the back panel from the S4. And not only that, but the battery is just as accessible, making battery installation and replacement a breeze. But let's talk details. The battery was given a bump from 2100 milliamp hours to 2600, but early battery tests are showing only a marginal increase in life from the S3, which makes sense given the new hardware in the S4. After removing the battery, we set our sights on the motherboard, but there were just a couple of components standing in the way. The first was the midframe, which was super easy to remove as there were just a few screws and clips holding it in place. The second was the rear-facing camera, which deserves some closer inspection. The S4's rear-facing camera boasts 13 megapixels and LED flash, back illuminated sensor, and shoots full 1080p HD video at 30 frames per second. Pretty impressive for a smartphone. Resting on top of the motherboard is the SIM microSD board, and the fact that it's so easily accessible scores even more points for the S4 in terms of repairability. Once that board was removed, we got our first good look at the motherboard. While there aren't any big surprises, that doesn't mean the S4 is lacking in components. Among the chips of note are the Broadcom standalone NFC chip, no doubt to be used with features like Google Wallet, and the Qualcomm 7-band 4G LTE chip, which is the same one found in the Nexus 4. But where is that fancy new processor? Well, it took some digging, but eventually we found it buried underneath this large Samsung chip. With the motherboard out and fully exposed, we continued on with our teardown, pleasantly surprised by the pile of unused eye openers and heat guns. For this teardown, the most exotic tool we used was a pair of tweezers, and we used those to excavate the front-facing 2.1 megapixel camera. This is the camera that will let you use all those nifty features like the S4's dual camera mode that take pictures from both the front and rear cameras simultaneously. So not only can you take pictures of your food, but you can take pictures of yourself taking pictures of your food. If you know us at all, you can imagine just how thrilled we are to see Samsung choose a responsible design that allows for easy battery replacement, offering not only greater convenience for us consumers, but extending the usable life of the phone well beyond the lifespan of its battery. Additionally, most of the components are modular, so if, for example, the micro SD card slot goes out, you can just swap out that board and not the entire device. A lot of people have said that modular design comes at a price, and that price is thickness of the device. The S4 at only 1 one hundredth of an inch thicker than the iPhone 5 laughs in the face of that notion, and I get to say, I told you so. And on that note, it's time to talk repairability. We score every device we tear down for repairability on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The Samsung Galaxy S4 scores a 8 out of 10. For a heck of a lot of super high quality images and detailed coverage that goes above and beyond what we've talked about here, make sure to head on over to ifixit.com and check out the full teardown. To keep up to date with all of our teardowns and repair guides, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at ifixit, and like our Facebook page. Thanks for watching and happy repairing.